Hey, does your eye look like mine? Yeah, well, if it does, you might have a subconjunctival hemorrhage. And today, I'm going to tell you what that is and what you can and what you need to do about it. I'm Dr. Michael Nelson, and this is Good Optometry Morning. So what is a subconjunctival hemorrhage? Let's break it down into terms. So it talks about the conjunctiva. So the conjunctiva is the clear, multi-layered, loose tissue that sits over top of the white part of the eye. And the conjunctiva has lots of little tiny blood vessels that run through it. And if one of those blood vessels breaks, you will get a little hemorrhage. Hence the name subconjunctival hemorrhage. But basically, a subconjunctival hemorrhage is a fancy name for a bruise. So if you get a bruise on your arm or on your leg, you get a broken blood vessel underneath the skin and it appears black or blue because you see it through the skin. Now when you get one on the conjunctiva, the conjunctiva is clear and so it appears red. What causes a subconjunctival hemorrhage? I've got the seven most common reasons for a subconjunctival hemorrhage and I will list them in order of the least to the most common reasons that I have seen in my clinic. So reason number one is some type of surgery to the eye. Now, this is the least common reason why I see in my clinic, because usually people can figure out, oh, I had some type of surgery in my eye. That's probably why I have this little hemorrhage. So this will typically be any type of surgery where they make an incision on the white part of your eye. So this will include any type of retinal surgery, including injections inside the eye. It can also include refractive surgery because sometimes the pressure that they use for some of the instruments can cause a break in one of the blood vessels. It typically won't happen in cataract surgery, but it can because cataract surgery usually makes an incision right in the cornea where there's no blood vessels. Okay, reason number two, some type of bleeding disorder. Now, when most people think of bleeding disorders, they immediately think of hemophilia. But hemophilia is actually pretty rare. There's actually a more common bleeding disorder, which you've probably never heard of. It's called von Willebrand disease. And basically, these conditions are conditions where your blood does not clot as easily. And so you're going to be more prone to get bruising, including bruising on your eye. Reason number three, high blood pressure. If you have uncontrolled or higher blood pressure, that's gonna mean that your blood vessels are gonna more likely have a break in them and cause a little hemorrhage. And so uncontrolled blood pressure could cause a hemorrhage like this. Reason number four, you're taking an anticoagulant or some type of medication that's a blood thinner. So most, most people are taking a blood thinner because they have some underlying heart condition or they are at risk for developing strokes. And so these will slow down your ability to clot and so you will be more prone to develop bruising. There's a whole bunch of these blood thinners, but probably the most common one that people are on that they may not realize is a blood thinner is a baby aspirin. All right, reason number five is related to number three in blood pressure, but basically anything that can cause a sudden increase of your blood pressure to your head can cause a hemorrhage like this. So this can include anything like coughing, sneezing, vomiting, straining, heavy lifting, anything that will cause a temporary increase to the blood pressure could cause a hemorrhage like this. Number six is a pretty obvious one, any type of trauma. If you get hit in the eye, you are more likely to get some type of bruise. And number seven, and by far this is the most common reason that I see in the clinic of why people get this, is under the category of idiopathic. Idiopathic is a medical term for when some type of condition occurs, but we don't have an explanation why. Basically, we don't know. But seriously, we've ruled out all the other serious conditions, and we know it's there, but we don't really have an explanation. Idiopathic subconjunctival hemorrhage is probably the most common reason that I'll see in my clinic for these hemorrhages, but you need to rule out all the other reasons. So when we are looking for signs of some type of eye disease, there's gonna be something called a differential diagnosis. And so what this means is that there's a list of things that look like a certain condition, but may be something else that we need to rule out and make sure it's not that. So there is a differential diagnosis for subconjunctival hemorrhages. There's a few types of rare tumors that can happen on the eye that will look like a subconjunctival hemorrhage. And so when a patient comes in, and so when you go in to get this looked at, your optometrist needs to rule that out. All right, so you know what this is, and I've given you a list of possible reasons why you may have had this. So the question is, should you see your optometrist? Well, I would recommend you still go and see your IDAR because it's important for them to differentiate some of these rare and more serious conditions. And especially if this is due to some type of trauma, because an injury that causes a hemorrhage could also cause a hemorrhage inside the eye on the retina, or it could cause a retinal detachment, or it can cause some other inflammations inside the eye that need to be treated. Right. So you've seen your optometrist, they've made the diagnosis, they may have even told you exactly why this is happening in you. What are you going to do about it? 
Well, I've got good news for you because these usually resolve in about two weeks, but if you take really, really good care of them, you can probably get them to go away in about 14 days. This is a bruise and the treatment for it is the same thing as when you get a bruise for your arm. What do you do? You wait. There's really nothing you can do to make it go away faster. You just have to give it some time and the body will clear that out. Okay, so I know you still have a few questions about subconscious alpha hemorrhages and I'm gonna answer those right now. So if you're taking a blood thinner and you think this might be related to it, should you stop taking the blood thinner? The answer is absolutely do not stop taking your blood thinners unless you talk to your physician first. You have to remember, this is a bruise and this is gonna heal up on its own. If you're on a blood thinner, it's probably gonna take a little bit longer for it to heal, but remember the reason why you're on the blood thinner. You're on the blood thinner to prevent a heart attack and to prevent a stroke. Those are way more serious than a broken blood vessel. All right, so this is gonna bother everyone else way more than it's gonna bother you. You're gonna forget about it and you're gonna get people asking you multiple times a day, oh, what's wrong with your eye? What happened to your eye? And you actually forgot about it and you say, oh yeah, that's just a bruise. Don't worry about it too much. You might be thinking that yours is getting bigger and it probably is. The conjunctiva is a very loose tissue and so blood can spread easily all throughout that tissue. And typically what gravity will do is it'll pull the blood down and spread it and it'll pull to the bottom and it'll make it look like the hemorrhage is getting bigger when in actual fact, it's just spreading to a larger area. So your eye might be a little bit tender, but remember what this is, it's a bruise. If you bruise your arm, is it a little bit tender? Absolutely is. So naturally, your eyes get to probably feel a little bit tender and a little bit sore. That's a normal feeling. It might even feel a little bit swollen or a little bit more full. This is not an infection and you're not at risk for developing an infection. And as a result, you don't need any antibiotics or eye drops to help clear this up. So on the topic of eye drops, there are some over-the-counter anti-redness eye drops and those will do nothing for this. Those medications are designed to constrict or shrink the blood vessels to make your eyes look a little bit more white, but these anti-redness eye drops, they won't help the redness on your eye go away any faster, so definitely don't use them. So as this heals, it's gonna change color. Right now, mine is a dark red color, and that's gonna to go to kind of a brown, to kind of an orange, bronzy color, and then to a yellow as it slowly fades away. So that change in color is a normal process. This will not affect your vision. So, so the conjunctiva is not really connected to the cornea, so this hemorrhage can't spread onto the cornea, so it can't interfere with your vision in any way. So when you see your optometrist, they're gonna do a few tests. They're gonna check your vision. They're gonna figure out with you what has caused this. They're gonna probably measure the pressure inside your eye. They may measure your blood pressure. They will give you some advice on what's causing this and what you need to know about it. But one important thing to know is that these shouldn't happen on a regular basis. If, if you start getting subconjunctival hemorrhages regularly, you should probably see your optometrist and you should probably also see your physician to see if they have a reason why you are getting these repeated hemorrhages. So there's more interesting videos like this that you can watch right here. So make sure you hit the subscribe and the bell button and have a great optometry day.